what are the key ingredients of a jazz lick? What do you need to figure out to get something to sound more like jazz? In this video, I'm going to start with a simple pentatonic lick and then I'm just gradually gonna add different things to it to get it to sound more and more like a jazz or a bebop lick. This is of course useful if you wanna add some jazz ideas to the way that you're playing or if you're already playing jazz and you wanna check out how you are with the skill set involved in making your own jazz licks. My name is Jens Larsen. If you wanna learn jazz and make music, then subscribe to my channel and click the little bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. This is a really basic D minor phrase. It's on a D minor seven chord and it's using D minor pentatonic. Really just the D minor box one pentatonic like this. And it doesn't sound wrong. It fits the chord, that's all okay. It doesn't really sound like jazz though. If, if we're thinking about it, you can find a lot of jazz that has pentatonic scales, but when we're thinking about something that sounds like jazz, then maybe it should sound a little bit more like Charlie Parker or, or Sonny Rollins or John Coltrane. In jazz, and especially in the soft genres that are coming out of bebop, it's very common to really follow the chord progression when you're soloing. So when you're improvising a line, you're really playing something that fits with the chord that's happening at that time in the song. And one way you do that is that you're using the arpeggios of that chord. In this case, we're playing on a D minor seven chord, so it makes sense to also check out how to use a D minor seven arpeggio in the line. And once you start working with using different arpeggios, then it makes sense to not think so much in a pentatonic scale and start working with seven note scales like major or harmonic minor or melodic minor. In this case, with a D minor seven, I'm just gonna use a C major scale, which is the same as D Dorian. Then I'm gonna use some arpeggios out of that one. So now we have this scale. And once you start adding arpeggios to your solos, I think you can also start to hear how that's actually coming out of jazz and starting to sound a lot more like a jazz line. When you're improvising, so of course we can use the arpeggio of the chord itself, so D minor we can use the, the D minor seven arpeggio, but we can also use the arpeggio from the third of the chord. So in this case, the third is F, and the arpeggio that we have there in C major would be an F major seven, so that would be this arpeggio. Then we get something like this. You probably already know and practice your arpeggios, but it's quite likely that the way that you're practicing arpeggios is as a complete position. So it's away from the scales. And I would actually say that if you wanna tap into this, then a really useful way to practice your arpeggios is within the scale. Because when you're improvising with an arpeggio, you have to mix it with all the notes that are found in the scale. So if we do that for this C major scale that I'm using here, so. I can play an arpeggio for each of the notes in there, and that will be this exercise. When you're doing this exercise, then it's really useful to not only play it like this, but also to know which arpeggio is which. So if we know that this is C major, then you hopefully also know that it's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and so on and so forth. And then that for each of those arpeggios, if you know the diatonic chords, then you have C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, A minor seven, B half diminished, and then we're back on C. And in that way, it's also gonna be easier so that you know, okay, where's my D minor seven arpeggio? Well, I have one here and I also have one here. Or the one from the third of D minor. So the third of D minor is F. And the arpeggios that we have there will be an F major seven. So we have and. And that way you get a lot of options that you can use when you're improvising. One of the most beautiful things about jazz lines is also how they use a lot of chromaticism. You're playing the notes of the chord and you're playing the notes of the scale, but you're also adding some of the other notes. And there are different ways that you can work with this. One is to use chromatic passing notes. So if I'm going from the E down to the D on my D minor chord, then I can add the note that's in between, which is an E flat, so. And another way of doing it is to check out some different chromatic enclosures. And a chromatic enclosure is just a way of playing a short chromatic melody that is going towards a note and usually you're gonna pick a note from the chord. So in this case, if I wanna play an enclosure to the third, to the F, then that could be something like this. 
And I'm sure you can hear how this is already starting to sound a lot more like a bebop line or like jazz. So if we modify the lick a little bit and add some chromaticism, then we get this. If you want to practice chromaticism, then it makes sense to think about the chord that you want to use it on. In this example, I'm playing over a D minor chord and it makes sense then also to try really to use chromaticism to point towards chord tones in that D minor chord. So for instance, the D minor triad. Now in the example, I'm actually going from the E and then down to the D. So I'm going down to the root and just adding a chromatic passing note. And you can of course do that to the other notes in the triad as well. So we have and then from uh, the sixth down to the fifth and then down to the third. And of course you can continue. And then try and do that exercise. It's important to use the chord tones and the reason why I want to do that is because the chromaticism is creating a little bit of dissonance and you want to resolve back into the chord. You do that by hitting a chord tone. Of course you can do the same with the chromatic enclosure. That would be this. What do you think is the most important part of sounding like jazz? Maybe it's something I didn't include in this video. Then you should leave a comment because I think it is an interesting discussion to say, well, these are the things that make something sound like jazz. And it can be really different things. For me, in the end, I know I talked about arpeggios and chromaticism. That is important, but it is really about rhythm. I think rhythm is really what makes something sound like jazz to get the phrasing and the feeling right. And in jazz, that means that we're playing a lot of off beats, you're playing a lot of syncopations and you want to play, maybe even if you're playing a long row of notes together, like I'm doing in this example, you still want to have some accents that are on the off beat. And you don't want to play just random notes on the off beat. That's not going to sound like something because it still has to sound like one long melody. So you need to figure out a way to just play these longer melodies, but then also make the rhythm a little bit more interesting and make a little bit more jazzy by adding some of these offbeat and syncopated rhythms. If you want to check out some more ideas on how you can use arpeggios, how you can use chromatic enclosures or improve your jazz phrasing, then check out this playlist where I have a few videos on those topics. If this is the first time you see one of my videos, you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next time.